Welcome to Fueling Your Legacy, hosted by Samuel Knickerbocker. Each week, we expose the faulty foundational mindsets of the past and rebuild a new, stronger foundation essential in creating your legacy. We've got a lot of work to do, so let's get started. Welcome back. We are excited, excited, excited to be here today. Um, this last weekend was phenomenal. I got the opportunity to go speak to a group of entrepreneurs and just share a little bit about my story and where I'm headed um, with feeling your legacy and changing lives and what that means and how we are impacting. If you've listened to a few of my videos or my podcast, then you've been along this journey over the last 15, 16 episodes, but we are going to even get deeper and more specific moving forward because I recognized that um, I've been a little bit too shotgunny. Okay, I, I need to focus on a few different things, and so I'm going to really nail down into fueling your legacy. What, what's the fuel? What aspects? What characteristics? Are you using in your life to fuel that legacy? Um, and how is that going to impact? For me, I specifically um, I look at and love to help people with their financial mindset. But I also recognize that a bigger part of that is learning about forgiveness and gratitude and love and living in a state of just bliss or, or joy. And how is that achieved? And I think if we can achieve that, that perfect state of con uh, not, I mean, it is contentment, the state of contentment where you're happy with where you're at, but you're still wanting to go forward and, and achieve new things. Um, if you aren't happy with yourself, if you haven't identified the things that you're grateful for yourself, then it's really hard to go and share that light with other people. And I'm just so grateful that this week I was able to go and, and speak to, to these group of entrepreneurs because it really helped me see where I've been maybe miss miss sharing my message. What really what my heart? What's the, what's the message of my heart? And how can I share that more? Um, yes, there's some peripheral things that I love to help people with, and money being one of them. But that's not my message. My message is really about okay, what do you want your legacy to be, and how are you going to mentally and emotionally and, and everything wise support that legacy? And so um, this happens to be a really great week to talk about legacy because um, it is Thanksgiving time and. We are all, well, I shouldn't say we are all, but a lot of us are going to get the opportunity to spend time with family and to participate in some traditions that have been there through Thanksgiving. And so I, I've mentioned this a little bit on my last few podcasts and videos, but one of the things that I would almost say is a tradition in my family that's not necessarily, I think it's an unspoken tradition, but we have not, we very rarely have holidays on the day that everybody else is having holidays. So for instance, um, Many times growing up, our day of Christmas fell on the day that my dad could get off um, and that as many people could be in one location as possible. So maybe that was a week before everybody else had Christmas. Maybe that was two weeks after everybody else had Christmas. Maybe that was two days later. Maybe it was that, that day. And sometimes it did happen on the day, but I think more often than not, what I would say is our family tradition is celebrating when we're there and when it's possible for us to all be together. And I love that because it, it, it really focuses on not the day, but the purpose of the event, right? For this, for instance, this year, um, we, as my family, the Knickerbocker family, we had our Thanksgiving party and dinner on the 3rd of November, which was kind of cool because it was also my uh, oldest sister's birthday. Um, but we all came down. We were able to take pictures, family pictures, which we haven't done in years, um, all in one location to actually have a family picture, which I'm excited for those to come out. But uh, so we took family pictures, but we also were all able to be in one place that time. Now it doesn't make sense and doesn't work for us all to be in the same location this weekend because we all have different families that we uh, need to go visit for our spouses. And we just have different things going on in our life. We live in different states. And so there's no point in focusing on, well, we need to celebrate the same day that everybody else is celebrating. You know, that's not what's important. What's important is being with your family and being grateful to be with your family and, and living in that that existence um, with your family. And so um, gratitude's super big for me. And that's one thing that um, has really helped me. Now, I want to dive a little bit deeper into gratitude because it, may, it was even more apparent this weekend. Um, often when we live our, our own lives, we don't recognize how good our life is um, until we go and see other people and see the things that they're struggling with. And for me, I have, have learned 
uh, in large part, I'm not perfect, but in a large part, I live in a constant state of gratitude and very rarely do I ever um, feel shamed. Do I ever feel like I'm not getting what I deserve? Um, do I ever feel unloved at this point? There's a lot of things that I just, I don't necessarily feel anymore because I've learned to live in a state of gratitude and to love myself and identify who I am and be grateful for that. And then when others want to contribute to that feeling of love for Samuel, then I'm, hey, I'm, I'm all in. I love when people love me, um, but I don't need their love for me to be happy. And that's because I'm grateful for, for every little experience, for everything that happens in my life. I've learned to be grateful. Now, to do that, it takes an immense um, level of understanding of what that actually is and how that applies. It takes a lot of reframing. There's some serious crap that happens to people out there that is truly, truly tragic. Sad, sad things happen to some people. And it's important to, to know that those sad things that happen to people, they don't have to remain part of your existence. They're there, but they don't have to remain part of your existence. And that's what I've learned. Um, if I can reframe an experience, if I can reframe an event in my mind for, as something to be grateful for, then I'm going to be happier. So how does that process look like? What does it, how do I operate from that existence? Well, um, I'm going to share a story that I've shared before, but just kind of share it from a, hopefully a gratitude, a perspective of gratitude, right? Um, I've been wanting a car for a long time. I've been wanting a, a new Honda Civic because I really like them. I think they look sweet and they get good gas mileage. And I just wanted a new car. My previous Honda Civic was about 13 to 15 years old. And I just wanted a new car. But I was unwilling to go out and make that jump and actually make that commitment to get a new car. Well, uh, I'm on my way to work one day looking in the rear view mirror because I passed a police officer and I didn't want to get a ticket. Right? I knew I was speeding because I speed a lot. Um, and I didn't want to get a ticket. So I was looking in my rear view mirror to see which way he turned out. Well, he turned out and went the opposite direction. So I was like, whew, I won. And then, bam, I crashed into the truck in front of me and totaled my car. Right? In that moment, I had two things that I could have done. I could have sat there and blamed the police. I could have said, oh my gosh, I can't believe that this happened to me. Why did they stop? Why? I could have done so many different things, but instead I pulled over right behind them. I said, man, are you okay? First, I thought of others, right? That's the first thing you have to do to live a life of gratitude. You have to reframe everything in perspective of others. What is the benefit or what is the, the situation that others are in, right? So I thought of others, said, hey, are you okay? And then looked over their car, made sure their car was okay. And then I chose to use this opportunity to talk to them because I'm somebody who likes to talk to people. And I have a, a career well, where being seen and being heard is absolutely important. And so I need people to know what I do for work so I can help them. And so I chose the opportunity to talk to them. I got to meet this new friend that I had never known before, probably would never have ran into, <laughs> figuratively and literally, um, unless this happened. And so I was grateful that this happened in that regard. I also, when I called my wife, Seconds later, right? I'm done. I'm walking out. What do I say to my wife about this experience? I say, hey, honey, you know how I've always wanted a, been, or I've been wanting a new Honda Civic? She's like, yes, I do. I was like, well, I just totaled my car. So it uh, looks like I'm going to get a new car. That's exciting, right? She's like, how can you be positive about this negative experience? The, the reality is things happen and we can choose how to react. And I choose to reframe things in a, in a state of gratitude and positively and, and, and positivity into my life. Each of you are going through different situations in your life. Maybe it's your kids are screaming and they just don't shut up, right? Maybe you want to help them, but you don't know how. Maybe you're just super, super tired and you're, you're stressed and you don't know how to work with your money. You don't know how to work with your faith. You don't know how to work with your family. And it seems as though things are just crushing in on you and they just keep caving in on you. Well, in those situations, you have a choice. You can choose to be grateful for everything that you do have, you can be choose, choose to be grateful for the roof over, over your head if you have one, for food on the table if you have food on the table. Uh, you can be, choose to be grateful for those things or you can choose to blame others, sit back and think, man, poor me, this, this sucks. And my, my objective is on a more one-on-one -on -one basis to help you walk through that process, help you understand how can we reframe every little experience because it is every little experience. We have to start living a life of every little experience from minute to minute, how are we living in a state of gratitude? Um, not just 
temporarily, but how is this a constant thing? And for me, over years and years of practice, um, I still am slightly conscious that some of these bigger things are happening in my mind, but for a lot of the little things, they just, it just, my mind just reprograms stuff so fast that I just appear in a state of gratitude, even though obviously there's some heartaches sometimes. There's things that happen, but if we can learn to always show up in a state of gratitude, what that allows us to do is have compassion for others. And so when you're going through, going to meet your family, going to Thanksgiving parties, you're going to see people that maybe you disagree with, that maybe um, you think, man, that person was rude to me, or I have a bad relationship with this family member because of X, Y, and Z from my childhood. Hey, we all probably experienced something like that at some point in our life. My challenge to you would be, how can you be grateful for who they are in your life? Not for everything they're not, or be grateful for who they're not. That's what I do. But be grateful for everything they are and everything they're not in your life right now today. And as you can live in that gratitude, I promise that your relationship with them will be better. The compassion that you have them for, for them will be better. And you'll be able to begin to have empathy for them, be able to see things through their point of view. And you may be able to repair relationships this Thanksgiving, this, this moment in time when you're with your family, you may be able to repair relationships that have been stressed and, and struggling for a long time just by simply living in a state of gratitude and, and knowing that these people who are, are maybe doing things you don't like or are offering unsolicited advice, whatever, they're doing it, one, because they love you. If they didn't care about you, they legitimately would not even think about you, let alone talk to you right? The, peop the reason people are willing to go out of their way to sh share their information with you is because they care about you. Um, and it may not be the way you want to be cared about, but you can choose to live in a state of gratitude and say, man, I'm so grateful that you care about me. I don't necessarily like your advice right now, but thank you for actually caring about me. Thank you for thinking of me. And I just, I just don't know how else to say, but in my life, if you can choose to li um, live from a state of gratitude and love, and abundance, you will be happier and you'll be able to repair relationships that you may have thought were gone beyond repair. Um, I don't think anything's gone beyond repair, but it's, it may not be easy, but it'll be absolutely worth it if you choose to live in a state of gratitude for your life. So we're gonna talk about this again um, on Wednesday. We're gonna share some books that have helped me gain that perspective of gratitude. And then we'll on, uh, Friday, we may have a guest, we may not because of the, the craziness of the week, but hopefully we can get somebody on here who is excited to share about their life and the gratitude that they have in their life. Maybe it'll be a, a accumulation of people who comment on this video. I'll just read all the things that you're grateful for um, because I think that's important. So if you can, that's a good idea. If you can comment one or two things that you're grateful for in your life today or somebody that you're grateful for, I'd love to give you a shout out as well as um, the, those, those things in your life and those people in your life that, that you are grateful for. Um, and we can share those around and spread happiness and joy to, to the whole world, which is my goal and, and my, the thing that gets me out of bed and excites me every day. So with that, please like comment and share. Um, if you are listening to this on a podcast form, you can review it. And also you can comment on that podcast. You can also share that on social media. I, I love the, the support there. Um, mostly so that more people can hear this message and more people can begin to experience greater levels of gratitude in their life and thankfulness um, because that is where I've found in my life has brought me the most joy and pleasure. Thanks for joining us today. If what you heard resonated with you, please like, comment, and share on social media. Tag me so I can give you a shout out on the next episode. And thanks to all those who have left a review. It helps spread the message of what it really takes to build a legacy that lasts. Catch you next time on Feeling Your Legacy.